Hello, it's me again, Este, and I'm here with my beautiful little doggie, but she is, come here, come here, do you want to have a little debut online? Come here, come here. Okay, she's a parrot, basically. Today we are doing a little Q&A style video about mental health, specifically my journey with depression and anxiety, I guess. Um, people always say that they love how open I am about it and I've got nothing to hide. I think it's really important to talk about depression and anxiety and mental health in general. I can really only speak about my experience, so that's what we're going to do today. Before we get into that, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been so supportive of my new project called Mirror Water, which is a community focused on self-reflection. Self-reflection is something that I'm very passionate about and I'm so excited to begin the journey and really get into things very soon. I have a newsletter that I would love you to sign up for. It's just via our website, which is www.mirrorwater.earth. We'll be setting a task every month and giving some nice food for thought. So I would love you to sign up for the newsletter. I'll also be giving like special information about what we actually are trying to do here um, some future plans and hint hint for anybody who's watching this video yes mirror water will be coming out with products but it's not for a very very long time it's something that we're working towards but it's like months and months and months and months away so I don't really want to focus too much on the products for now because it's such a long process and um yeah, there's no point getting all excited about it now because it's just, it's one of those things that you know does take a long time, but it really does take a long time. So that's something for in the future and down the line, but for right now, really focusing on some community building activities and just having a safe space to, you know, be vulnerable and think about various subjects in maybe a new and interesting way. So anyway, thank you so much. You can follow us on Instagram at mirrorwater.earth and sign up to the newsletter on our website, mirrorwater.earth. Yes, dot earth. All of the links will be down below. And now let's get into the mental health q and A. I I guess I'll just do a quick um, breakdown for anybody who's maybe new to the channel or doesn't know my story. Basically, I've experienced um, depression, I would say like low mood since I was a kid, since I was like six or seven years old. Like I always felt like I was a bit low compared to friends and stuff like I always just felt like my baseline was just low um and then cut to when I was a teenager I experienced pretty severe social anxiety so paired together it was just like not great for me to be a teenager and even though I'm only 30 years old it was not something that people really understood then at all like uh, when I told my mom that I had social anxiety um, she was kind of like what are you talking about get to school <laughs> sort of thing and now she obviously thinks much differently and she was never being like harsh with me but it was just something that people didn't understand so I did really learn how to live with that anxiety and push through it I guess you could say but pushing through that is extremely difficult. And sometimes I wasn't even able to push through it. So yes, I had panic attacks. And also just the depression was so tough for me because I just didn't understand like what was wrong with me. Um, anyway, I'm 30 years old now. It's been a long time since then. And in my early 20s, I um, took antidepressants for the first time. A lot of people ask specifically what I'm on. Um, I've always taken citalopram. That's the only antidepressant that I've ever used. It's an SSRI and I've never tried anything else and that is what I'm on, but I know there are tons of options and you really have to find the medication that works for you. Um, but yeah, when I was in my early 20s, I tried that for the first time and I really felt like, wow, is this how people are supposed to feel? Is this how people feel all the time? Like, I just couldn't believe the fact that I was walking around with this like huge weight on my shoulders when I now take this medication and I was like, it's like a huge exhale. So anyway, we can get more into that, but that is my story in general. And I've been on and off the medication now since I was in my early 20s and we can get kind of into that, but that is where I'm at. My current status is I have been back on citalopram for about five weeks. 
So I got off of it for about five months and then we can get into why I got back onto it, but that is the current situation. How did you know you were at the point where medication was required? I really like talking about medication when it comes to depression and anxiety because I think there's still a bit of a stigma around it. And um, it's something that has completely changed my life. It has really, really helped me. And I do not think anyone should feel embarrassed or ashamed about taking medicine for something that makes them sick, you know? So for me, it's something that I'm really passionate about. And I get really frustrated when people say that like, you know, we're being, oh my God, I just saw a flock of parakeets out my window. That is one thing I love about London. We have parakeets here. Anyway, um, uh, ba ba ba. what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. I once did a panel about mental health and one of the people said that like people are so over medicated and I do actually to an extent agree that you know sometimes people are over medicated and they want the like quick and easy fix but you know that's not the case for so many of us who struggle and need medication to feel functioning so it's something that I'm passionate about so anyway um, how did I know I was at the point where medication was required I basically was incredibly depressed. I had that kind of classic depression that you kind of see in movies. I just had zero sense of joy. I didn't want to get out of bed. I couldn't be bothered to do anything. My mood was like, it was like past the point of being flat. It was like on a down decline. And I was lonely, I was sad, I was crying all the time about like nothing. Like tears would literally just be like streaming down my face for no reason, you know? So eventually after months of that, I said to my mom, like, I don't know what to do here. And she was like, you should probably go see a doctor because depression runs in our family. And the doctor prescribed me the medication. And then, like I said earlier, I just couldn't believe how quickly and how much better I felt. Like I felt like I got back into my body and um, it was just amazing. So. How did I know? I feel like I just kind of inherently knew that this was a hole I couldn't dig myself out of. No amount of exercise, no amount of eating kale, no amount of like whatever. It was just, I needed help. How do you make peace with having mental health issues? I was actually talking to another family member about this who also experiences depression and he was just kind of saying like, it kind of sucks that we just have to like live with this. Um, and like, exactly, how do you make peace with the fact that this is something that's always going to be part of you? I actually have accepted it. I feel like because I've experienced it for so much of my life, it's just who I am. And as I'm getting older, I really notice my moods and I really can see like where I'm heading and how quickly and some of my triggers, for instance. So you really do get a sense of who you are and what helps you and that's not to say that like I always think my depression is going to be bad or I'm always going to have it under control. Like it really does ebb and flow. But I think noticing those patterns in yourself are really, really helpful. I just think I make peace with it because I don't really have another choice and there are ways to manage it and things to do and help um, to ask for. So I feel like I've definitely made peace with it. And by the way, I would recommend therapy. So if you're thinking about doing therapy and you've got the means to do it, I would recommend it. And it has actually helped me work through a lot of like particular specific issues in my life. How would you describe depression? Well, I feel like now with COVID and everything, a lot of people are experiencing depression um, more than ever before and anxiety as well. And I think maybe it's an area where a lot of people wouldn't really have been inclined to like go there, you know, they have ways, to, you know, they can go socialize and this and that and they stay kind of above water. But I think once you kind of go into that depression territory, it like drowning to me is like how it feels. Like it just feels like, I feel it really physically in my chest here. That's probably the anxiety side of it. And then the depression is just, you just feel like you can't catch your breath. Like you just can't get to a stage where you feel okay. Whether that's sadness, flatness, um, no motivation, just, um, 
unhappy with everything. Um, I when I'm depressed, I tend to like lash out at people. I can be like a little bit mean um, or short with people. And then when my depression gets really bad, my anxiety is kind of hand in hand and gets bad. So anxiety is a little bit different because for me, it's just like more of a frantic energy. So like depression leaves me really lethargic anyway. And then I have anxiety in my head, like ramping up these like thought processes and combined together, you are just truly, truly exhausted. Um, it's like being on a hamster wheel. You never get off when you're on anxiety. But then instead of being a hamster, you're like a sloth but you're being forced to run. And that's basically, <laughs> apparently the best way I can describe how I feel when I'm in a kind of a bad way. Eventually it just catches up with you and you just stop and you need time to like actually recover. So in this particular instance, when like five weeks ago I felt like that, I realized sooner than I usually would have that I probably need to get back on this medication. and. For me, like the cycle of medication is I realize I have like a burnout situation or like a breakdown and I need to stop for a minute and then I realize, okay, I should probably get back on this medication and then I get back on the medication. I feel amazing. I feel great. And then I go way down again. I like seriously the week two of being on the medication, I can kind of like really go downhill and then it kind of plateaus and I just feel kind of flat again. And then like week four or five, I kind of level out. And I just start to feel like quote unquote normal. And then I'm usually on the medication for five or six months. I feel like I'm great. I don't need the medication anymore. I feel awesome. I'm carrying on. I'm super productive. I'm not tired. I'm not sleeping in the day. I don't need this anymore. And then I get off the medication. Then I feel like I'm back getting back on that hamster wheel. And then crash, same thing. And it's been the same cycle repeating. So I'm really trying this time to stay on the medication. The reasons why I get off it is just simply like, nobody wants to take a pill every day. Nobody wants to feel like they need medication to like be just like themselves, you know? So you just, I just kind of like get in my head a bit about it and usually stop. And anyway, it's the same cycle over and over. I've done it so many times now that I hope I don't do it again. Um, but that is how I would describe my personal journey with depression and anxiety. It's exhausting. Like, I think that's one thing people maybe don't understand about depression and anxiety is just like the physical and mental fatigue that you get from it. And by the way, like, you don't have to be like stuck in bed all day, like incredibly, incredibly blue to be depressed. Like depression looks like many things. I'm a functioning depressed person. You know, I run my business, I have a dog that I care for, who, by the way, she is like my support animal. I'm actually her support animal because she's so nervous. Um, but, you know, she's my support animal. Something for me that really helps with my depression is having routine. So every single morning I have to wake up and walk her. Otherwise, if I'm getting in a depression rut, I could like stay in the house for like a week without even thinking about leaving. So for me, I know having a dog is super important for my mental health, besides the fact that I love her. Um, but yeah, so it's just noticing those patterns. What side effects do you experience with medication, if any? I do experience some side effects. Like one side effect is like dryness. I'm so thirsty right now. Like my mouth gets so dry. My throat is like the Sahara right now. So dryness is something that I experience. So I'm always drinking water. I can't really think of any other side effects that I get with it. Nothing, nothing really. I know a lot of people were asking about like weight loss and weight gain. I have like separate issues with my weight. Like if I'm super anxious, my appetite completely fades and I basically don't eat very much. When I'm very depressed, I tend to eat more so I can be a little bit heavier when it's like a combination of both. It's just like some days I eat a lot, some days I don't eat. Like it's very unhealthy. And that's another reason why the medication helps me stay balanced so much because I just, I can be healthier, you know? Um, 
So that's just my own personal experience with it. But I haven't, I wouldn't say I like start taking the medication and notice a weight loss or a weight gain. I will say that this particular time that I got back on the medications, the Talipram, it was more for anxiety. I wasn't as depressed this time, but my anxiety was probably the highest it had ever been. And I think that that's because of COVID probably, um, just spending so much time alone and in my own head. Um, like the smallest things would just send me to the moon. I like even going to get groceries, I would have to like prep myself for that. If I knew I had to get groceries the night before, I'd be like, right, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. These are the clothes I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna walk the dog. I'm gonna come home. I'm gonna get the tote bags that I need. And then I'm gonna get my mask. I'm gonna get my hand sanitizer. I'm gonna make the list. And then I'm gonna walk to the store. And if I see anybody on the way, I can just smile. Like I was just on speed anxiety. Like it was just repetitive thoughts, even for the most simple tasks. Like, okay, I've got a Zoom meeting. What if I don't know how to share my screen? Can I practice sharing my screen? And then I would practice like five times with various people if I could share my screen. Like it was just becoming a problem. I've never had anxiety that bad in my life. So I'm not dealing so much with social anxiety anymore because I'm not seeing anybody but I was dealing with just like general anxiety and it was like, I couldn't live like that any longer. I wasn't being able to like get things done. It's interesting to me that it's the same medication that works for both depression and anxiety and it just really helps quiet the noise. Like that's what I would say about my medication. I'm not trying to like convince anyone to take medication. I'm just talking about it because I feel like nobody really talks about the medication side of things. What time of the day is worse for you? Oh, I do have one side effect, insomnia. There we go. Um, nighttime is the worst for me um, with my anxiety. Like I have a lot of trouble sleeping at the best of times, but this medication can cause insomnia. And when you're already somebody who's prone to insomnia, like a lot of people that I know who also take SSRIs don't experience this, but I definitely do. But I already have insomnia issues. Um, I will literally be awake all night. Sorry, my throat that dryness. Um, I'll be awake all night. Like last week, there were nights where I didn't even sleep for an hour and it's really, really difficult, but that seems to have subsided. And that is a side effect that does tend to get better. One thing I'll say is if you do take medication, take it in the morning, take it as soon as you wake up because, um, it can help with the insomnia. Uh, because if you take it too late in the day, it just kind of kicks in too late, if that makes sense. Do you think the medication dampens your emotions or feelings? Sometimes I have like that thought of who is the real me? Is the real me like upset about every single little thing? Or is the real me sad about everything? Or does the me real me not care about anything? I don't know, I'm so carefree. Like who is the real me? I have the same issue when I have PMS. I'm like, is this the real me? Who is the real me? Um, so sometimes, yes, I would say it does like <sighs> dim the sort of like heightened part of an emotion, but the sentiment is always the same. It doesn't like change who I am as a person. It just, you know, if something would like, for instance, the other day, my bike got a flat tire. If I was not on my medication, that could have sent me on a spiral. I would have been like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be so late. I've missed this much of the day. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna fix this? Where am I gonna go? Instead, I just walked my bike to the nearest bike store, asked them if they could help me fix my tire. They fixed it and I was on my way. So it does dampen, especially the bad like emotions and feelings, but I wouldn't say it like means my like happiness is any lower. If anything, it's allowing me to be happier. What do you do when you're feeling depressed or anxious to make yourself feel better? Obviously, I love self-care. Like for me, various self-care things help so much. Obviously, things like yoga, going for a walk, talking to a friend, but I think especially anything that gets you out of your head and back into your body, like yoga is so helpful. Um, it really can totally switch and reset me. Also a bath. If I'm feeling really low, low, low energy and I don't have it in me to do yoga or go outside, I will have a bath. The water is so healing for me and it just helps me 
create that space away from my phone. Like literally stay away from your phones and stay away from the internet when you're feeling like that. Like they're, they're, get off the screens basically. Um, what else do I do? Eat some food that I enjoy. Put on a show that makes me like feel comfortable and happy. How do you handle drinking while on medication? I feel like you can drink when you're on medication. I actually, well, I, I didn't drink for many, many years. I didn't drink for like nine years or something like that. Maybe more, probably more. I just didn't drink. I thought I was allergic. I'm not actually allergic. I just get really bad hangovers. <laughs> um, and then I went through like a phase in my life where I was drinking not heavily, but like I enjoyed having a drink or two going out with my friends and stuff. And then since lockdown, I've realized that drinking alone is no bueno for me. I get very depressed very quickly and I have an issue stopping at the right point um, when I'm alone. So I do not drink alone anymore. I feel like I've posted a few times on Instagram of some stories when I have been drinking alone. And yes, they might be entertaining, but ultimately very unhealthy. But sometimes, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You wanna have a drink, fine. But let's not forget, alcohol is a depressant. It literally makes you de more depressed. So as somebody who is depressed, I don't really benefit from drinking very much. So I don't drink that much. Like I have really changed the way I am approaching alcohol. Like I couldn't even tell you the last time I had a drink, two weekends ago. <laughs> okay, that's not that far away, but I had one glass of wine with dinner. Like that's not a lot. And then the weekend before that, I did have some champagne, but anyway, it's all in moderation. Everything in moderation, including moderation itself. And sometimes it's what you need and sometimes it's what you don't need. And it's okay to say no and it's okay to say yes, whatever, do you. But for me, I feel like the less alcohol I can drink, the better um, is kind of where I'm at. But I'm also a 30 year old woman who's stressed out. So sometimes it's really nice to have a glass of wine, you know, so it's just balancing that. Does medication affect your sex drive? Medication can affect your libido. Um, I've definitely experienced being on medication and it's really affected that. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard in COVID times to really quantify how you really do be feeling. <laughs> so it is a little bit of a tricky question, but I will say that yes, in the past, it has affected my libido um, for sure. But so far, you know, I'm still as horny as ever. <laughs> Do you worry you will become addicted to medication? I don't really think this is the kind of medication you get addicted to per se. Like, it's not like you take it and you're like, oh yeah, that was a great hit of antidepressant. No, it's just, like something that I've realized helps me and I am personally in a stage of my life where I don't have it in me or the desire to like push through. Like it literally feels like you're wading through mud with like a horse on your back. Like it is truly draining. And I personally don't want to live like that. Taking this medication really helps give me the space to address some of those issues, those underlying issues that I might have, and gives me the time and like more freedom to explore things like yoga and get into those routines that help me, like those more holistic things, you know, rather than being in survival mode all the time. I will say like, this is just my experience. Please talk to a doctor, obviously, um, or talk to somebody who, you know, you trust. Um, but I guess the thing I'm just trying to get across in this video is you don't have to be ashamed to take medication and it doesn't alter my personality or anything. It just, I can share this story that um, about a week before I decided to call the doctor and get back on the medication, I was talking to my mom on the phone. I was saying like that I was all stressed out and I was crying and my mom was like, well, I say like you've been very weepy lately and you've been pretty down. And I was like, have I? Like, I genuinely didn't even realize that I was spiraling. And I think that that is another really difficult thing about this is that you sometimes think that you're fine, but you're not actually fine. So it is really important to have people in your life that you trust and who really get you um, to keep 
you kind of on track with these things. Also, I remember saying to my mom on that call, like, I don't wanna have to be back on medication. Like, I don't wanna be like this. And, you know, she's like, stay, like, that's fine. And I said to her, I just want my friends and family to love me regardless of like how sad I am. And my mom was like, that's not like a thing. Like, we do love you regardless, but we see you struggling. And I didn't see myself struggling. Um, but I'm so happy to be open about this. And, you know, I do obviously share a lot of the highs of my life, but I don't share a lot of the lows. I share some of the lows, but not all of them. And I think one other thing that I would say is if you are feeling low, like it's okay to kind of sit in that emotion for a bit and work it out and just like be in that for a bit. And I feel like sometimes if I'm like that for like a couple of days, sometimes I'll say, right, tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm gonna try to shift it a bit and do something for myself, whether that's yoga or whatever, and try to push myself to do something for me. I also have a question about like, how fast does the medication work? For me, it like is almost instant. It's like within a day, I'm like feeling better. Usually, like I said, I get to the point where I can't take it anymore. And it's just like, such a relief when I take that first um, antidepressant because I'm like, oh, okay, I can like chill for a second now. So it works pretty instantly. I just know how much it's helped me and a lot of people in my life and wanted to talk a bit about it. I can't think of anything else about it, um, but if you want to leave a question down below, I'll do my best to get back to you and um, give you an answer. I think that's it for now. So take this with a grain of salt, this is just my personal experience. I'm not like trying to get, I, I have no affiliation with any antidepressant. I just know that when I was beginning to think about going on them, I was like nervous about it. Um, and so I just wanted to do this video for anybody who's in that boat. I personally will probably be on them for the foreseeable future. I Like I said, I've been on and off and on and off and that's fine too, you know, so that's where I'm at. Oh, another thing is a big fear that I had when I was at my lowest was what if I take an antidepressant and it doesn't work? Like what if I'm broken? <laughs> I think that every single time I get back on them um, and they do work. So if that's a fear that you have, don't worry about that. And if that one doesn't work, there will be something else that can help you. So. Don't feel hopeless, you know? Like that is how I started to feel when I was really at my lowest. Like, what if nothing can help me? But trust me, there is always a solution. So that's all I would say. And please talk to somebody uh, if you're feeling like that and let them know how you're feeling. Somebody supportive and somebody understanding. And I hope this video has helped you in some way. Oh, one other thing is I will say like, it is a very like 360 approach you kind of have to take to like mental health. It's not just like one thing's gonna cure it. You can't just like take an antidepressant and then like everything's gonna be fine. Like it's not like a magic fix either. You, you know, it's really helpful to take the antidepressant and then like I said, do other activities that also boost um, your mood and things like that. Like I'm just somebody who isn't operating up here. Like I'm not like a super like, oh my God, hi, it's nice to meet you. Like that's just that's just not who I am. I am pretty mellow. So um, also just like accepting that somebody else's like normal is not the same normal for me. And it's like finding what feels really balanced within myself. So ending it here and I will see you very soon. Bye.